Yo, yo, what up guys? JP back at you once again, bringing you guys a massive DVD slash Blu-ray slash VHS slash Laserdisc slash magazine update. This is a gigantic one. It probably rivals my last massive one, so that's pretty cool. It's been a while since I've done one, a couple of months, and I've actually been buying a lot of stuff, which isn't normally the case. So uh, we have a massive update here. Some stuff that I got as a gift for my birthday as well. Uh, and uh, let's just jump into it because we know this is going to be a long one. First up here, we have uh, some Fangoria's. This one here, the bloody best of Fangoria. Uh, I got this for a birthday present. I don't really collect Fangoria, but I have been buying them as I see them, if they're cheap or, you know, they're kind of a cool birthday present as well. I'm not going to lie. So shout out to Carly for hooking me up with this and the other Fangoria's you're about to see. But this one I actually was reading and it's very interesting. It has... Uh, the first thing in it is an interview with Dario Argento, um, fresh off of Tenebrae, I believe. Such an interesting read. Like, I was so into it. Hearing, you know, him talk about the potential third part in the Mother's Trilogy, which is Mother of Tears, as we know, and they even call it by name. To see how long that film took to develop, considering, you know, Tenebrae was, what, like, 82 and then Mother of Tears didn't come out until the, the mid-2000s. Uh, it's pretty crazy to, to look back and, and hear uh, some of these directors talk about projects that either never happened or happened way too late. Uh, but yeah, very, very interesting read this one was. Um, after that, we have the wonderful, I guess, R People Under the Stairs uh, cover issue of the Fangoria magazine, which is pretty cool here. Uh, I love people under the stairs, plus you got little Freddy's Dead stuff, Basket Case 3, that's pretty cool. Uh, I am a fan of the, the I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of like the 90s era of horror, even though it's not great. I just am fascinated by like the landscape and like what was going on at the time. So that one's pretty cool. I haven't, I haven't started reading any of these other ones yet. Uh, and then we have a Nightmare 4 edition, which I love Nightmare 4, so that's pretty cool also is Phantasm 2, Fright Night 2, um, The Blob, all kind of cool stuff there. I am I'm definitely interested in digging into these Fangors. It actually makes me want to collect more of them. I know it's still a viable collection to collect them all. Like It's not going to cost you everything you own, you know, so that's still kind of cool that it's still possible to collect them all. I know Jeremy's on his way. Uh, this one is Godzilla, The Latest Rampage. Uh, which is pretty cool. I believe um, the very first, um, I guess what you would call Fangoria. I think it was called Fangoria back then too. It, the first one I think had Godzilla on the cover, so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, also is Quentin Tarantino's Vampire Epic. Uh, this is issue 145 and Species as well as Rumpelstiltskin. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love this because these are these are the era of horror where I was actually alive for, but I don't remember anything about. So that's why it's cool to me. Uh, and after that, I have my very first Delirium magazine. This is the er uh, retro erotic issue. Not really the best first issue to get, but they sent it to me as a press item. Um, but there are some cool stuff in here. There's uh, a little spotlight on something weird video, Jess Franco. Uh, plus there's some microwave massacre stuff, and you have a kind of um you know photo shoot of the lovely Felissa Rose as well as the awesome Caroline Williams also lovely uh in in pretty cool like you know horror themed uh photo shoot which was pretty cool but yeah this is cool you know Full Moon's own magazine it's actually quite well done you know Full Moon's usually known as having lesser quality but it, it seems to be the same quality that you would expect from you know a professional level magazine so that's really neat uh, and then we move on to the Lone Laser Disc here, which looks to me to be maybe a like UK release or something. Um, which uh, I believe it's PAL, so I don't even know if I could really play it, but uh, it's cool to have. And that is the Return of the Living Dead. Uh, I don't know if Laser Discs had like region coding or like they you couldn't play PAL stuff. I'm not exactly sure how that worked, but. Uh, I love the cover. This is probably going to go in a frame, so I, I mean, I would never even really want to play it. Uh, it's going to go in a frame and go up on the wall because I love, love, love Return of the Living Dead, and it's pretty cool little cover here. I love the skull. 
And uh, I love blue. Blue is my thing, so this is really cool. This was also a birthday gift. Uh, love, 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 love these laser discs and the way they look. They're really neat. Uh, next up, let's move on to the VHS. I didn't get a ton here uh, over the past couple months. There, it's been kind of dry lately, um, and I've gotten a lot of non-horror stuff actually. So first up is Cheech and Chong's next movie. Um, me and Carly were just hanging out, and she had mentioned she'd never seen a Cheech and Chong movie when we came across this at Goodwill, and I was like, hey, let, "Hell, let me buy it so we could watch it real quick." Bought it, went home and watched it. Um, I forgot this one. I'd seen it before, but it's been a long time. It's it's not as good as the other ones, uh, some of the other ones, but it's still pretty solid, and she didn't really care for it too much, but she thought some stuff was funny. Uh, but I grew up on Cheech and Chong, so I love that stuff. Uh, and then I got this simply because it was like this big clamshell, and that is Operation Nam. Um, just looked really cool, so I was like, ah, oh, what the hell, let's, let's scoop this up and, and check it out. Uh, I believe I started watching this one, but fell asleep. Uh, and then there was another one, an HBO video one, and this is uh, Ceasefire, which uh, there was a bunch of Vietnam uh, tapes there, but this the, I grabbed the two that were in the cool clamshells just because they look cool. I don't know why I keep buying stuff like this, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get around to watching it. Uh, so it's really just taking up space, especially like over to my left here where I have all the VHS. I doubt I can keep them there forever. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> That is Ceasefire. Let me know if you've actually seen any of those and if they're good. Uh, this one I picked up simply because i never seen it and I wanted to check it out. It's a Martin Scorsese flick. It's Cape Fear. Uh, never seen this. Don't know much about it. Robert De Niro. I'll check it out. Then we have a full moon release. I couldn't pass up. It is actually a screener, it looks like of arcade because it says for promotional use only not for sale rental duplication or public performance um, so it seems to be some sort of screener or something like that and I was like oh that's that's really neat uh, so I'll pick up that plus I've never seen arcade uh, it looks kind of cool and goofy cool for full moon I, I like full moon so that's awesome after that we have one that I'm almost I'm almost certain that I seen this as a kid but I can't really remember it's uh, Sleepy Hollow High. It says on the cover, Scream meets Dawson's Creek, which is funny. Um, so it's probably totally 90s, totally ridiculous, um, or early 2000. It's like from 2000, I think. But, uh, you know, the, the, that type of teen horror, I want to check it out. And I don't think I've ever seen this on DVD before, so I don't know if it has a release. It probably does, uh, since 2000 is probably when it, DVDs were... You know, it was already, it came out when DVDs were a thing already. So, Sleepy Hollow High, I'll check it out. It, I, I, I really, really am a fan of those bad 90s, uh, t, you know, screen era type of movies. Uh, and then finally here we got Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Another Godzilla I picked up. There's a bunch of them, and I've been picking up all of the ones on VHS I see, which is, you know, cool, cool way to own them. So... There is another Godzilla down. Pretty happy about that. This one looks ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the DVDs. So, first up here, we have a film called Bucket of Blood. Uh, this is a, I believe, Charles B. Griffith written and Roger Corman directed flick. Uh, and I believe this is public domain. I don't know much about it. Olive's put, all of films put this DVD out, but... Yeah, I think it's like a comedy or something. I don't know. We'll check it out. After that, uh, here's a bunch of titles that I got in. Uh, I did an unboxing for earlier um, this year. Uh, we have Premonition here. This is a Asian flick. This is the J-Horror line from Lionsgate. Pretty cool. I uh, wanted to check that out. So Japanese horror there. Uh, one of the many Amityvilles I didn't own. Amityville Theater. Man, I really gotta grab these because even though these aren't like the official Amityvilles, even though there was a, a cool little write-up that one of my homies did talking about uh, the legitimacy of any of the Amityvilles after part one as legit sequels. And it seems like there's uh, it's probably likely that most of them are not legit sequels, um, including you know Amityville 2 and 3. Uh, based on the information he found. So anyway, you, what, what you count as a real Amityville is up to you. I mean, I assume that most of these bad ones people don't count. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the Amityville Theater. 
uh, man, I don't know. It it's probably god awful, but some of these are getting harder to find, so I need to pick them up when I can find them cheap. After that, we have uh, Itchy, which is the prequel to Itchy the Killer. This is an Unearthed Films release. Never seen it, never seen the other Itchy, but I will soon, so decided to grab this one as well. Uh, after that, we have The Devil Inside. I don't know, I kind of always just wanted to see this one. It was, it was in that bizarre um, era of horror. It was like right before I really got into the game of, you know, videos and, and, uh, podcasts and stuff like that. It was like right there, you know? And I remember, um, from like 2009 to like 2012, uh, the hate for horror and especially modern horror was so, modern horror was so high that I often find when I go back and see these, you know, modern horror films, they're actually not as bad as people made them out to be when they first came out. However, I don't know about this one. I hear this one is actually pretty bad. Uh, so, we'll see. Uh, another Dimension Extreme that I didn't have, uh, Automaton Transfusion. Uh, I've heard this one sucks pretty bad, but I like these Dimension Extreme films, so I'm going to keep picking them up as long as I see them. I've also noticed that the better Dimension Extremes typically over the years have been more of a hot commodity so the price goes up so usually the cheaper ones are also the worst ones at least from my experience it seems to be that way uh, we have a my first ever title in I guess what was the Man Eater series which I think that's what this is but I don't see the logo anywhere so it might not be um, but that is Croc. This could be its own film. I actually thought it was in the Maneater series. Uh, but yeah, I have not seen this one and don't know much about it, but I love me some killer animal flicks. Even, even a lot of the bad ones. Uh, after that we have an Eight Films to Die For. I really need to just pick these up already. I've, I've been slowly grabbing them from different, uh, years as time went on, but I just need to bite the bullet and just grab the rest of the first season at least uh, That is wicked little things. I believe this was the one that was like filmed uh, Or like takes place in Pennsylvania, which was pretty cool uh, Like a mining town because obviously I'm from PA and I know a lot about that uh, So wicked little things. That's pretty cool. At least I think that's what this one was uh, Then we have a tartan Asian extreme, which I've been wanting to pick these up uh, as time goes on uh, this case here is a little damaged so I'm gonna swap out this case when I get a chance but we have what we have here is the maid um, this one looks cool you know it, it seems to be like a J horror like um, ghostly one but I like titles like the maid or something it just I don't know it's kinda cool <clears throat> then we have another after dark horror fest here eight films to die for we have the grave dancers this one actually came sealed even though it says it's used so uh, always cool when you grab a sealed one um, when they're telling you that it's going to be used. I like that. Happen happens more frequently than than not from, uh, I think you got these at second spin. Uh, after that, we have a Hitchcock that I didn't know. And I was kind of waiting for a Blu-ray on this one just because I love to collect all the Legends films on Blu-ray. Like, just the way I am kind of. But this is an old school Anchor Bay, so that's kind of cool. It is, Do You Like Hitchcock? And this is an Argento film that I have not seen. And I'm slowly seeing every Argento that's ever came out um, because he's one of my favorite directors now. And uh, I haven't not liked any of his films. And I know people usually say, well, wait till you get to this era of films because I've only seen his 70s, 80s, um, and 190s and one early like three like two or three early 2000s ones, but I've liked them all so uh, We'll see we'll see uh, that is do you like Hitchcock? After that we have Asaia or something. This is another Tartan Asian extreme man I did all the Tartan Asian extremes have these little slip boxes because I really like these ones that do um, Which it, it'll bum me out if they all had them and then they didn't you know, obviously a bunch of them are uh, not not having them. But, uh, oh, look, a little quote from Ryan Turek. Rotten. Rotten Ryan Turek uh, from DreadCentral.com, formerly DreadCentral.com, now Blumhouse. A story that haunts you long after it's through. Cool. We'll check it out, Ryan Turek. After that, we have the other release from the J-Horror line 
from Lionsgate, we have here Infection. So I was trying to pick up a lot of like Japanese, uh, South Korean, but really just Asian horror in general because I'm kind of weak on it. So I picked up a few of these films. Uh, but yeah, that's Infection. After that, we have another Asian Extreme here, Tartan Asian Extreme. And this one also is in that cool little slip box. It's Abnormal Beauty. Uh, so yeah, more Tartan Asian Extreme flicks. There was a bunch of these. I would love to just collect all of them. Um, what else do we have here? So uh, we have Juon Black White Ghost. Uh, Black Ghost, White Ghost. You know what pisses me off about this release here is I bought it for like eight bucks or something, and the very next day. Um, after I received it in the mail, I saw it for like five dollars, so that really annoyed me, but it happens. After that, we have the Zombie Diaries, which is a Dimension Extreme title that I didn't own, so I grabbed this one, and once again, I hear this one's pretty bad, but you know, I, I, I want to have the entire line of Dimension Extremes eventually, even though some of them are like non horror, but I still want the whole line. Uh, just because I, I loved that era of, like, not only collecting, but just YouTube, and it was just an exciting era for me. It was so new, so I'm very nostalgic on it now, which is weird to say, because really when you think about it, it's been almost a decade since that era was going on, but, you, like, for the longest time, it felt like it was just you know, recently, which it, I mean, I, I guess it still technically is, but I'm already getting nostalgia for that era of horror, which is very weird. Uh, after that, I wanted to pick these up so bad. Uh, I grabbed a couple of them and then I got one for my birthday. Robert, um, it was funny because I kept seeing this at Walmart and I didn't realize that it was a different movie like every year. Um, I would always see it, but I always thought it was the same movie. And then I, one day I was like, oh, they must have made a new Robert film because it was like a double pack. And then I found out they've made four of them. <laughs> so that is Robert. Uh, I really want to see these eventually. They just they just look cool. <laughs> I, I mean, they look like really bad ripoffs of like Child's Play or something or like Annabelle. But apparently people are saying they're not too bad. I don't know which one this is. Maybe the second one. Um, it is The Curse of Robert. But, yeah, man, these things look so cheesy on the back. But, yeah, man, that's cool. <laughs> After that, we have Zombie Diaries, too. And, uh, yeah, another dim Dimension Extreme that I wanted to grab. Uh, did they make it Zombie Diaries 3? I don't even know. Uh, After that, we have Followers. This is a... Oh, this is actually a new movie. I totally forgot that this came out. Uh, I got this as a screener and totally forgot about it. Um, it looks to be something as of a found footage, maybe? I'm going to have to check this out. I'd love me for some found footage. If anybody's seen that yet, let me know how it is. Um, after that, finally grabbed. Uh, I, I can guarantee probably that this is not the case that it came in originally. Um, but it's an artisan release here of The Mangler. Uh, and, uh, or The Mangler 2. I've actually not seen any of these films. I have read the short story of The Mangler and... When I'd always known of the Mangler, especially because the, I believe the first one was directed by Toby Hooper, but I'd always known that there was three films, which I just assumed were like a slasher series. And then I read the short story last year, and I was like, "Huh." It was about a killer like washing machine, and I was instantly like, I instantly thought back to the movies. I was like, "How the hell did they make three movies about a killer washing machine?" Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to eventually see what these are about if they stuck close to this story at all, but yeah, I've heard nothing but bad things about the Mangler series. After that, we have a Pulse 2, another Dimension Extreme film. I actually liked the first Pulse, so not, not even hating on Pulse 2 yet. Maybe I'll check it out and I'll actually like that one as well. After that, we have The Revenge of Robert, which I assume is the second or third film or the fourth one. I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, I think I need one more, which is like the Toy Maker or something along those lines. But yeah, they made four Robert films. It's so crazy. Uh, then we have Lake Placid 2, which I was certain that I owned, but apparently I did not. I uh, still need to pick up 3, 4, and Lake Placid versus Anaconda. I think they made a new one too, so probably another one I have to pick up. This one actually isn't that bad. Uh, it is very CGI heavy, but it actually isn't that bad. I've seen it before. 
After that, we have the I, and the I is the I3, actually. I picked up the I1 recently, I'm pretty sure, uh, and I've seen the I3 for $4, so I went ahead and grabbed this. Uh, I still need the I2. And then I also picked up Boogeyman 3. Uh, I have the first one, and I need to pick up the second one, but yeah, whatever. Boogeyman 3, cool. Uh, I hear that the second and third one are better than the original. Uh, and then I picked this up for $3, and that's Scary Movie 4. Um, I don't own any of the scary movies, but Jeremy wanted to eventually cover them on the podcast, which I just think is insanity, but he doesn't... He gets to pick episodes, too, so if we ever cover the four scary movie movies, then wish me luck. But I know, I've seen at least the fourth one, I think. I, th I, I've se I think I've seen all of them. I don't know. But I do remember it just being so, so, so bad. It was awful. After that, we have The Village. And this is an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I got this for three bucks as well. I actually like this movie. I haven't seen it since it came out. But I remember people being really pissed off about it. And I actually enjoyed it. I did not hate it at all. And uh, I like mo uh, I like a lot of Shyamalan's movies, actually. Uh, after that, we have Tokyo Gore Police, which um, eh, I'm probably going to hate this, but I I've been trying to broaden my horizons a little bit with all types of horror, including the really ridiculous over-the-top Asian stuff. So I've watched a couple, like Meatball Machine, and um, there was another one from the 90s that I watched, but... Uh, as Patreon picks. So people are like pushing it on me. So I figured eh, maybe I'll just push it on myself. <clears throat> After that is a film that I don't know anything about. I don't even know where I got this. Uh, I can't remember. And that is Curse of the Mayans. <laughs> Looks pretty awful honestly. I'm not going to say much about that. <clears throat> Here's a film that I've been wanting for a while. Been wanting for a while. I've seen it before. I really like it. It's called Blackwater. Basically two people stuck in a tree with a crocodile under them trying to eat them. Uh, nothing amazing, but I remember it being pretty exciting. And it's directed by the guy who did The Reef, which is a similar film. A bunch of people in the water floating and a shark's trying to eat them. So uh, I love these sort of survival horror type films and, you know, contained horror. I love that stuff. So I finally got, got a chance to grab this. I've been wanting it for a long time to revisit. Uh, after that, we have Mulberry Street. <clears throat> and uh, I hear this one's really good. Uh, this is the, I think, third series of After Dark Core films. Or the second. This actually might be the second series. Uh, which I, I hear this this series is pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's uh, Mulberry Street about like killer rat zombies or something. Sounds pretty cool. After that, we have Kill Baby Kill Mario Bava. This was from Diamond Entertainment. I picked it up and instantly people were like, oh, you're going to hate it because of the transfer or something. So I was like, fuck. You know, because I've been... <clears throat> I've seen a couple Mario Bava films, and everybody keeps praising him uh, simply as the best filmmaker in horror ever, you know. So, I didn't really get that from the three films that I had seen. So, I keep saying that I disagree, but I really shouldn't because I haven't seen enough of his work. Um, I've only seen four films, actually. But nothing in those four films made me think he was the greatest ever. Now, I'm not trying to hate on Mario Bava here because, like I said, I haven't seen all of his films. But <clears throat> hopefully with more Mario Bava exposure, I will see where people are coming from. I'm not saying he's a bad filmmaker at all either. Just greatest of all time seemed a little out there to me. So we'll see. Maybe he is. Uh, but that's Kill Baby Kill. We'll talk about that again in a minute. Uh, the Violence Movie 1 and 2. I recently did a little review on this. I got this sent to me from MVD. I actually really enjoyed both of these. <clears throat> they are not great movies at all. They're not even really movies. They're short films. They're only like 20, 30 minutes each. Um, and they are just ridiculous. They actually have the score by Harry Manfredini, which is pretty cool. I like that. And they're, they're not great movies, but they have this sort of just charm to them that I love with shot on video movies. I recommend picking it up if you're a shot on video fan. If not, don't bother. You're not going to like them. After that, I got a couple from Full Moon Entertainment here. Um, I don't even know if I should... So, these... I, I didn't really know what these were. I thought they were something else, I guess. Like I thought they were just more like Jess Franco type of... Is, am I thinking of the right person, Jess Franco? 
can't even remember. Um, <clears throat> there was a film that I got from them recently called, like, Women in Prison something, or something behind, but I can't remember, but I thought they were like that, like, just exploitation, but these seem a little bit more just, like, actual erotic movies, um, and that is The Young Seducers and Rolls Royce Baby, so, yeah, um, not sure if I'm gonna get to these anytime soon, but they're there. After that, we have a couple of Full Moon, or, not, sorry, um, Umbrella Entertainment stuff here, uh, and we have the Money Movers, uh, which is pretty cool. It's based on a true uh, story of uh, the biggest and bloodiest armed robbery. Uh, pretty cool concept here. Pretty cool movie. Uh, Money Movers. It's an Oz exploitation classic. After that, we have Society, which um, I recommend checking out. It's awesome. Uh, unfortunately, it's the DVD version, but it's from Brian Usna, and if you don't have the Umbrella or the Arrow Video Blu-ray, um, you definitely still want to own Society because it's awesome. It's ridiculous. It's crazy by the end. It's crazy. I've reviewed it before. I've watched it a few times. It's awesome. All right, and let's continue here. We're going to go into the Blu-rays now, which is pretty crazy. Um, let's get into those. Uh, running out of space here to put things, but this was a birthday present <clears throat> for me, uh, and it's actually a Region B flick, but that same person, Carly, got me a Region Free Blu-ray player, which I was really excited about, uh, so I can now play it, but it is Excision. Um, this is from the Monster label, which I actually really like what they do. Uh, with their green cases and stuff like that. I've seen a couple of films they put out. Pretty cool monster pictures. Uh, I wish I could get in with them and, and talk about, talk uh, you know, promotion and stuff like that. Because they seem really neat. And now that I have region free too, um, that's pretty awesome. But uh, Excision is a very cool movie. I recently just watched it after Carly shoved it down my throat. So I'm happy to finally own it on Blu-ray. It's an awesome, awesome movie. And uh, has great cast, great great acting got John Waters in there for a little cameo which is pretty cool Malcolm McDowell uh, good stuff it, it's a great movie uh, it has a commentary on this particular blu-ray release so that's pretty cool I'm very I'm very happy to be region free finally 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 and uh, after that <clears throat> this one I was tracking down for a while as well as some of the other releases by this particular company I really want to grab all the ones that I'm interested in but uh, they, they're so pricey. It's so rare that you see them for, you know, for like 20 bucks. Um, but that is Pieces. Very happy to have this. This is a Grindhouse releasing uh, release. And uh, I've wanted to see this movie for a very long time again. I, I've, I have it and I own it. On, uh, I think, Diamond release. The same one that, that Kill Baby Kill was released under. And I'll tell you that the transfer on it is pretty trash. So to see this movie in a more glorious transfer will be awesome. Uh, so yeah, that is pieces. Unfortunately, it did not come with the super awesome puzzle that half of the releases came with. Uh, super limited, but yeah, pieces. I love I love these Grindhouse releasing three discers here. Uh, I have Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Ferox. The Beyond um, and now Pieces. I still want to get Cat in the Brain and I Drink Your Blood. Um, there might be a couple other ones I want too, but hopefully I can find them for cheap one day because they're really expensive. Uh, after that, we have, and I think they're getting more expensive because I think they're going out of print, but after that, we have another birthday gift here. We have the Innkeepers. Uh, this case itself has seen better days. I think it was used, but um, still pretty cool. This is a Thai West film. I've actually never seen this. Uh, this is one of the few Thai West films I've never seen, so. I'm actually pretty excited to check this out. I've heard good things. Uh, after that, we have the exclusive Horror Pack Limited Edition um, of Dead Hooker in a Trunk on Blu-ray, which was really cool. I was happy to get this um, because, it, like I, I said, it was a Horror Pack exclusive, so to actually have this is pretty cool. I've never seen this film, and I've always wanted to because this was like the Sasuke Sisters' debut and uh, got a lot of praise, super low budget, so I'm sure that it's not great, great, but you know, kind of interesting to see at the same time. After that, I, I, I saw this for super cheap and I was like, holy crap, this movie was so hard to find forever. 
And uh, the reason that it was so cheap is because, because I quickly jump on it, jumped on it and bought it, uh, but is because I didn't realize that it had got announced for a re-release, so people were selling off their old edition, I guess. And that is the film Death Ship, which I've always just loved this cover. Such a cool cover. Um, not, this is not Ghost Ship, this is Death Ship. And uh, this one looks awesome. I can't wait to check this out. It looks very fun. This is a Scorpion releasing uh, version here. So, going to check that out. Can't wait to. After that, we have the very second release in Dread Central Presents line, and that is The Terrifier. Uh, based on, I believe, the short series of Art the Clown that was in All Hallows Eve. Really fun slasher flick. I, I really loved it. Very throwback style. Uh, very creepy and funny at the same time. Awesome killer. I hope they make a few more of these because Art the Clown is really awesome. Jeremy praised them for a while and I, I need to go back and see that All Hallows Eve short because that sounds awesome. <clears throat> I really like that movie. Uh, big shout out to the homie you and your horror movies for hooking me up with a copy. Uh, my homie Matt, he basically for ordered two or got two or something, and he was like, oh, I have this extra one. Do you want it? I was like, dude, thanks. You're awesome. I need to hook him up with something because that was really dope of him. <clears throat> After that, we have uh, my very first ever Code Red purchase. Um, it is a Wes Craven film that I did not own. Did he direct this? Oh, wow, he didn't even direct this. I thought he directed this. Hmm. Uh, but that is The Mind Ripper. And uh, this is The Hills Have Eyes 3. As, uh, Code Red, you know, obviously traveled to capitalize on the name of it. Has nothing to do with The Hills Have Eyes films, but I've always wanted to see this. I hear it's really bad, but Lance Henriksen is in it. So uh, I, I couldn't pass it up. It was, it was like 10 bucks or something like that for free shipping. So I, I could not believe that Code Red is actually like from what I understand, they're actually coming around and being a better company, which I was like very anti Code Red for a long time, but I'm willing to give anybody a second chance if they clean up their act. So apparently they have, and I had no issues with this. Ordered it, free shipping, got there within a couple days. Really smooth transaction. I appreciate that. So that is The Hills Have Eyes 3, which I just purchased. Uh, after that, we have the green room and i bought this because it was i think it was five bucks and i was like yes i need this absolutely love this movie made my top 10 i believe it was number five or so from two years ago and uh yeah rest in peace to anton yelchin he was fantastic in this movie i really wanted to revisit this one because i liked it so much and i think that i would even like it more if i saw it again but really cool movie anybody who's into like punk rock would would probably dig that uh, after that, we have <clears throat> Victor Crowley, which the cellophane is falling apart on this one. Uh, but yeah, this is the fourth Hatchet film. Came out of nowhere. Huge surprise. They announced it, and I had seen it like the next month. Um, I actually got to see it at the theater with Adam Green. One of the best experiences of my uh, life. It was so cool. I really appreciated Adam, and the, the, the crowd was great. It made me really love this movie. Uh, so I, I'm going to revisit it probably tonight, actually, for uh, a podcast review that I have coming up. So, yeah, that's it, Victor Crowley. After that, we have Misery. Um, this was one of the titles that was hanging out at Walmart. I like when they get some Scream Factory titles. That's pretty cool. And it was $12, so I definitely couldn't pass it up. Misery is awesome. It seemed like people were buying it, so hopefully we see more of those releases in there. I've actually haven't seen Misery in years, so I do want to revisit this one uh, because I, I plan on soon going through Stephen King's entire library of films like Dave Z is doing. I think that would be fun from the beginning to the end. Uh, after that we have the It's Alive trilogy and this was a Scream Factory release I had pre-ordered. It was just too cool to pass up, man. I've never seen these films and I've always wanted to. They look very sweet, so I picked it up. After that, we have The Fourth Kind, and I've always wanted to see this, so, you know, I checked it out, or not checked it out, picked it up, and uh, I'll check it out sometime later. You know, it's a, I hear it's pretty scary, you know, it's like a found footage, faux documentary type thing. Uh, I remember it being on at my friend's house uh, before, and me kind of seeing, like, clips of it, so I do remember it a little bit. It did look kind of creepy. Uh, these films I've been wanting to 
check out, uh, I have seen the first one here, and that is Rise of the Planet of the Apes. The uh, box set of the original five films came out on Blu-ray for 20 bucks like two or three years ago. And I picked it up and I went through all five of them and I, I really enjoyed them. They were a lot of fun. And I had then seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes and I thought it was really good too. So I was like, oh man, I, I want to revisit those and kind of see them. Ever since three years ago when I watched that the original films, I was like, oh, I want to see the, the new series as well. Um, but I got Rise of the Planet of the Apes here. And then we got Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which I hadn't seen this one yet. So I'll, I'll revisit Rise and then I'll check this one out. And the third one, which I forget what the title is, uh, that one they have too, but it's like 10 bucks right now. I'm waiting for it to get a little bit cheaper. Uh, this is used at this store that I go to. Um, I got those both for like 6 bucks each. After that, we have the second film in the Insidious Quadrilogy. We have Insidious Chapter 2, which I really like. I want to revisit this one. I haven't seen it in a while. But this was actually the movie that made me stop watching trailers because I felt like they showed every scare in this trailer when it came out. So uh, I haven't really watched trailers since, but yeah, that's Insidious Chapter 2. Uh, and then I told you we'd come back to this. This is Mario Bava's Kill Baby Kill in the, uh, I believe, Kino Lober release. Uh, this was actually really cheap quickly after I bought the DVD and somebody said the transfer was probably garbage and I also seen this very cheap so I was like you know what I feel, you know if I'm gonna give Mario Bava a shot at being the greatest horror filmmaker ever I at least need to do him justice and see his films in the best way possible so I picked the blu-ray up even though I had just bought the DVD and that is the problem with horror movie collectors <laughs> um, after that we have Insidious Chapter 3, which uh, I got for $5 at FYE the other day. I've actually haven't seen this one since it came out as well, and I didn't own it, so I was like, you know what? Time to get Insidious Chapter 3. So I bought 2 and 3 at two different places in the last month, which is pretty cool. So that's Insidious Chapter 3. After that, we have The Green Inferno. I needed to watch this in order to do the Eli Roth special that we did uh, a few months ago. Uh, I still liked it just as much as I liked it before. Uh, it's a hundred percent Eli Roth making fun of social justice warriors. Uh, if you don't, if you watch the movie thinking that that is the core message, uh, you might enjoy the movie more because uh, I wish it was less focused on that. But it it is so obvious in the second watch, especially when you're thinking about that. After that, we have Shocking Dark. I recently reviewed this. Um, it's like an Alien slash Terminator ripoff. It's okay. It's very bad acting. It's, oh boy, weird, weird movie. Um, but really cool uh, film by Bruno Matai. I think it's fun. It's cool to see these films released. After that, we have Zombie 3, which turns out I'm a pretty big fan of. I didn't realize I was. I thought the movie sucked the first time I seen it. But watching it again, I was a fan. I like Zombie 3. Zombie 3 is awesome. After that, one that I didn't like as much, we have Zombie 4. But yeah, After Death, you know, it's it's okay. It's not bad. It's high paced, high action, you know, lots of gore and stuff like that. So, pretty cool. Uh, the story just isn't there for me, though. I, w I hope they release the fifth zombie film, which I've only seen one time, and that's Killing Birds, which I don't think really has much to do with Killing Birds. Uh, after that, we have a few Vinegar Syndrome releases here. We have Liquid Sky. I'll be watching this very soon because of the 82 podcast that's coming up. want to check this out. I can't wait for that 82 podcast. I need to get watching, though. After that, Bloodhook. Oh, man, Bloodhook was so fun. I absolutely loved it. Good times. Bloodhook, good stuff. So much fun. Um, trauma. I am becoming a Trauma fan, believe it or not. After that, we have Blue Vengeance. Uh, this Vinegar Syndrome was really cool as well. Um, this is what you look for when, when you buy Vinegar Syndrome. Something that's out there, weird, never heard of, probably wouldn't like if you've seen it on VHS back in the day, but now you see in, in this glorious transfer and you just appreciate it a little bit more. Pretty cool. After that, we have a Cult Epics release, which I don't know what this is. This looks like, like porn or something to me, but I don't know. I'll check it out, I guess. <laughs> uh, I didn't ask for this one, just kind of showed up, and that is Frank and Eva. Um, but yeah, you know, whatever. It's 
it's called epics. They, they've actually not let me down ever. I've liked everything that I've seen by them. Uh, after that, we have The Church, which I still haven't popped in, but this is from Scorpion uh, slash Doppelganger. Um, I just haven't been in the mood for the long-ass movie that is The Church, even though I do really like the movie. Uh, Michele Sauve, whatever his name is. Um, I, I do really like this movie and his films, but I just, after watching The Sect, which was super long, I just didn't feel like watching The Church, but I will soon, I will soon, I promise. Uh, after that, we have Moonchild, which is another one of those, um, cult epics releases. I think this guy is the same guy that did In a Glass Cage, which is a really good movie, made my top 10 at 86, so, uh, yeah, we will check this out, 1989. After that, we have another release from Doppelganger here. Looks kind of cool, sounds interesting, not really horror though. Uh, it is called Aloha, Bobby, and Rose. Uh, sounds like some sort of like, um, I don't know, like Hollywood CD side couple on the run type thing. Looks kind of cool, you know, whatever. Um, then we have a Giallo here called Red Rings of Fear, Fabio uh, Tessi. Uh, this is another Scorpion release here. This actually looks cool. I'll check this out. Um, got a Giallo. Uh, it is Enigma Rosso. So check that one out when I get a chance. Uh, I've got really behind on screeners, guys. I do apologize. Uh, after that, we have Mohawk, which is from Dark Sky Films. I've heard good things about this one, so we'll check this one out. I think Jeremy said it was pretty good. Uh, then we have Suspiria, which I did a review for a little while ago. Uh, Synapse Films awesome awesome release here uh, I love the colors this is actually a really good cover uh, normally I'm not a huge fan of the covers that they do for Argento films but this one's really awesome um, more more so Arrow than than Synapse but yeah after that we have Mimic and Mimic is an I just got this in the mail the other day this is from well go USA Entertainment it's an Asian flick uh, we'll check this out, see how it is. Um, we're really behind on 2018 watches as well. Uh, I also got a screener of Insidious, The Last Key, which I threw a review up for the other day. Uh, this is courtesy of Blumhouse and Universal. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, also, we got another one from Universal. Here we got Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell. Uh, pretty cool movie. I did enjoy it. It's the sixth Tremors film, and I'm still into them. After that, we have The Strangers Pray at Night from Universal. And this one was cool. Awesome rewatch. I really like The Strangers Pray at Night. I'm going to move this stuff around. You guys so have a little bit more room. Let's try not to break anything or drop anything. All right, let's continue on here. Uh, a couple of error, or sorry, I keep getting companies confused. Umbrella Entertainment release just got these in the mail. These are going to be thrown in the Blu ray player very soon. We have The Beastmaster. I've always wanted to see this. This is a Don Coscarelli movie. Apparently, he had a huge problem on this film, or maybe it was Beastmaster 2. I'm not really sure. Did he do Beastmaster 2? I don't think he did. Um, but apparently, he like, tried to take his name off of it, but. Apparently this movie is pretty fun. It's like a swords and sandals type movie, so I'm down. I am down with that. Pretty neat. After that, we have uh, the first two releases in the Beyond Genres World of Film uh, sub-label from Umbrella here, which is really cool. We have Reanimator, and then Bride of Reanimator, and Beyond Reanimator. Uh, I absolutely love Reanimator. It's a lot of fun. It's Stuart Gordon, good stuff. And I've never seen Bride of or Beyond Reanimator. So really excited to check these out. I think it should be a really cool experience. And I really like this genre label by Umbrella. They are numbered releases, though, which is going to annoy some people. But um, one thing I can say I'm not a huge fan of is uh, usually with the thicker Blu-ray cases of Umbrella and Arrow Video, I don't really like the slip covers on them that much. They seem to get damaged better. Uh, and then we have another drive-in delirium. I love these things so much. I wanted to pop this in this one in bad because it seems to be like just insane, <laughs> insane trailers here. It's a trailer compilation, the new batch, and they do a fantastic job on their trailers as well. They they remaster the trailers in high definition. So, um, oh wow, there's actually a bonus trailer compilation on here called VHS Delirium. 
Uh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, 175 uh, mind-blowing trailers. Awesome. I can't wait. To, I, I love the first two Delariums. After that, we have Death Wish 4 and 5. Uh, they People wanted it. They gave it to them. The Death Wish 4 and 5 releases. Uh, pretty cool double feature. Um, I recently just watched the first Death Wish, so I'm going to check out 2 and 3 as well as 4 and 5. Not enough time in the day, though, guys. As you see, this is like months worth of movie watching. Uh, after that, we have Jungle. Uh, this looked kind of cool. It looks like a survival horror or something uh, based on inspiring story. True story, Daniel Radcliffe and Jungle. Definitely going to check, check that out. I love survival horror. After that, we have a couple of Arrow Academy, or an Arrow Academy release here. We have Sleeping Dogs. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm not, I haven't checked out any of the Aero Academy yet, but yeah. Uh, me and my pap are going to watch these two because he loves westerns. This is a pistol for Ringo and the return of Ringo. Looks really neat. Cool stuff. Filmed by... Dis I'm not going to say his name. Never mind. Um, and then we have Senju Suzuki, The Early Years, Volume 2. I don't think I own Volume 1, but this is an Aero video release, actually. But yeah. Cool little box set there. Uh, not sure what type of films he has. And then the... Sasha Gierty 4 film collection here, which is uh, an Arrow Academy release. They do so many of these. Like, if I, I was like thinking about this the other day, the Arrow Academy releases are so amazing. Like, and they put they seem like they put out so many of them. But why they should? I feel I feel like these aren't selling well though. You know that's what I'm saying. Like they don't seem like they're hot commodity titles. So I don't know why per se, you know, like, I, I think they're trying to be, like, the Criterion Collection for, of Arrow, but I don't know why they don't put, I mean, not to say they don't put the effort in horror, because they definitely do, but, like, if they released as many, like, cool editions like this as they do horror, I'm sure that would be much appreciated. Uh, after that, we have Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, man, I love me some Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and this slipcover is awesome. This is one of the best Arrow video slipcovers ever, uh, and... Yeah, I, I actually, their their last couple slipcovers have been awesome. The ones for Era, so. Really cool stuff, but that's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I recently watched it for the first time. Good stuff. Same thing goes for Basket Case with the slipcover. Really cool stuff. There's so many features on the back of there. Um, I'm going to hold on to the Synapse release, though, because I don't think it has all the the features from the, the Synapse film. So I'm going to hold on to those still. But, yeah, Basket Case, absolutely love it. After that, we have 2000 Maniacs, and this one uh, is a uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis film. Uh, check this one out when I can. I do like enjoying the Herschel Gordon Lewis films. Uh, Savannah Smiles, this is MVV, MVD Rewind. Pretty cool, nothing amazing. Um, kind of my least favorite of those films so far. Uh, then we have The Return of Swamp Thing, Jim Wynorski. This one was pretty fun. Uh, has one of the cringiest moments I've ever seen in a horror movie, though, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, I love the design of these uh, MVD cases, especially since they're all unique. Like, they all have their own little stickers and different things on them. Really cool. Uh, and then we have Went to Coney Island on a Mission from God, Be Back by Five. I absolutely love this one. If you've never seen it and you're into non-horror stuff, definitely check this out. It's, it's one of the cooler films uh, I've seen of recent memory. And then finally, guys, for the update, we have uh, one that I haven't got to yet, um, but it's probably next on my list uh, in terms of screeners. We have Abominable, which is an MVD Rewind uh, release. Pretty cool stuff, so that is Abominable. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the update. I know they're pretty long, but I'm going to get out of here. My mouth is really dry. I need some energy drinks, so bye.